Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome here. Welcome to all of you here this afternoon. Of course, to I extend a special welcome to um, the members of the press who have come with President Bush. Can I first of all say how pleased I am to have the opportunity to welcome on his first trip to France the President of the United States and his wife. It's of course a great pleasure for me to welcome them and I think it's also a great pleasure for all the people of France to welcome them. And that is something that I wanted to say in no uncertain terms. We had this afternoon uh, a, a working session. We'll uh, meet again over dinner. And then tomorrow, as all of you know, President Bush will be in Normandy. And I think it's very moving for me and for the people of France to know that for the first time ever, if I'm not mistaken, the President of the United States will not be in the United States on Memorial Day. And that on this occasion, the President will come and pay a solemn tribute to the great number of young American servicemen who gave up their lives to fight for France, for Europe, for freedom. This fight for freedom, for liberty, is a constant fight, a fight that we all engage in, a fight that is a bond between the peoples of the, both sides of the Atlantic, a fight that is pursued still today under very specific guise, the fight against terrorism. We exchanged views. We had an intense, candid, friendly exchange of views. And I think this uh, echoes uh, and epitomizes the uh, nature of the dialogue that we have had uh, ever since President Bush's elections in the number of contacts we have had either uh, in Europe or when I have uh, um, been to the United States. I think the last time we met was when uh, we both were in Monterey in Mexico uh, and also on uh, over the phone. We mentioned a number of issues, the fight against terrorism and in this respect we we have a similar understanding of what is being done and what should be done to fight and eradicate terrorism. We both know that uh, terrorism still exists, that it can uh, be active anywhere at any time, and that therefore all the leaders across the world must pay great attention to this issue and be determined to eradicate terrorism. We also mentioned strategic issues. Uh, in this respect, we paid special attention to the um, change and the developments in the relationship between uh, the US and Russia, and we welcome this change. Russia is a major nation, a great nation, and I think that uh, the relationship between Russia and the US uh, are crucial in the world today. On Tuesday in Rome, we will have an opportunity to uh, set in stone this uh, change in the relationship to act upon also uh, the new treaty that has been signed between both presidents in Moscow yesterday. We have an opportunity to make more concrete the relationship between NATO and Russia, and as you know, for a long time, the French position has been that uh, the relationship between Russia and NATO should be strengthened. And you might even remember that the Founding Act was signed here in 1997, uh, even though it didn't have quite the consequences that we should, uh, could have expected. This being said, nowadays, Russia, uh, from now on, Russia will be uh, closer involved, and this will be the result of the NATO Council in two days' times in Rome. We also mentioned, of course, in uh, the list of strategic issues, the fight, of prolifer uh, the fight against proliferation, proliferation in a number of region regions across the world. 
We also mentioned the relationship between France and the U.S., and of course, the relationship between the EU and the U.S. These relationships are very good uh, at a political level. They're instrumental for the uh, equilibrium and the balance of our world. At an economic level, they're essential, instrumental in the good health of the global economy. There can be indeed no balance in our world if there is no strong relationship between France, uh, between the US and the EU. We also spoke about issues where we have diverging views. Uh, trade issues, for instance. The farming bill, for instance. And in this respect, uh, the President said that uh, there might have been, there could have been a misunderstanding of what the goals of the Farming Bill was, a misunderstanding here in France and in other places maybe. But I think that uh, this means that they, we have to have more consultation, more consultation between the US and the EU. We also, of course, mentioned uh, steel. These are, of course, very real issues, and uh, real answers have to be given to these problems after consultation and, and, and intense dialogue. But can I just remind you that these differences, these diverging views, only account for 5% of the trade between the EU and the US. Of course, that's important, but we have to have a look at the greater picture and have a sense of perspective. We also mentioned a number of other issues in which we have slight diverging diversions of views. Environment, for instance, the ratification of the Kyoto Protocol. And I, I personally uh, stressed the fact that there was a very real danger, a very real risk in going on consuming more of our planet than the Earth can actually produce. And I think that all of us know that uh, these are very real issues and that we have to go on talking, discussing and working together on these issues. And I'm sure, I, I, I'm convinced that we will find the right ways to produce, to consume um, new ways to do so, and I think that all the new technologies that are being developed nowadays will uh, enable us to do so, while at the same time consuming less of uh, our natural resources and better control um, pollution. Of course, these issues are being discussed in other fora. Uh, we also discussed globalization. And I said that, yes, of course, globalization is unavoidable and is positive because it increases trade and thus production and thus wealth and thus uh, the number of jobs that there are across the world. This being said, there is a, a, a necessity that we have to bear in mind, and that is controlling globalization so that the development of the people and of the countries uh, is protected. So what I'm saying is that globalization in trade has to go hand in hand with globalization of solidarity. We will be this evening mentioning a number of other issues, international crises, for instance, the Middle East, the topical issues, uh, the difference, between the tension between India and Pakistan. We're talking about Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, the Balkans, and Africa. We'll be talking about Africa in the context of the new relationship that is currently being de de developed in the relationship between rich and poor countries. We've already, in a way, touched upon these issues, and I wanted to. Uh, I, I did stress when we were talking with uh, President Bush that, uh, as a long-time advocate of. Uh, aid to poor countries and, and relationship between poor and rich countries. What I stressed is that uh, for a very long time these issues hadn't been considered properly and that in Genoa we had 
for the first time a very real discussion about uh, Africa. And that will be what we should remember of Genoa, although people will remember other things of the Genoa summit. Um, and I think that this was partly due to the initiative taken by President Bush. That gave us a real opportunity to talk about development, uh, development at large and development of Africa more specifically. And this also enabled us to um, move from a situation where we give assistance to Africa to a situation where we have a partnership with Africa. And that also is uh, one of the goals of our next meeting in the G7 format in Kananaskis in Canada, where we will talk about the NEPAD. We also spoke of um, some, situa some local uh, situations about in Africa. So all that is what we have done today. We've uh, spoken in a very um, understanding and friendly uh, atmosphere. True. Uh, I'm uh, honored to be here in France. It's my first trip as the president uh, to this beautiful country into this beautiful capital. Um, I always uh, find it a great joy to talk with Jacques Chirac. He's a, it's not hard to figure out where he stands on issues. And, uh, and he's a good friend. He's a friend to me personally. He's a friend to my country. And for that, I'm grateful. I'm also looking forward to going to Normandy tomorrow. Uh, we do believe this is the first time a president has been out of the country for Memorial Day. Uh, I'm looking forward to giving the speech. Uh, Memorial Day in my country is a, it's a day to honor those who've sacrificed for freedom, given their lives. Many died in, in France and looking forward to the, to the moment to share my country's appreciation. And we, uh, in the talk, I'm going to talk about, um, uh, there's been current, you know, modern day sacrifices. We still fight people who hate civilization. It was the uh, civilization that we love. They can't stand freedom. It was President Chirac who was the first head of state to visit me in the White House right after September the 11th. I was very grateful for that, uh, for that visit. As he himself said that we, we're going to fight to, defect, to defend civilization, and I, I couldn't agree more with him. And I want to thank the French people uh, for not only the sympathy shown for my country after September the 11th, but the strong support in the war against terror. Jacques and I spent a lot of time talking about um, how to better uh, fight this fight. Uh, and that's not just in military terms. Uh, I speak in terms of uh, doing a better job of cutting off uh, money from terrorists, denying them safe haven. Uh, and, uh, and as we fight for a safer world, how to make the world a better world. And uh, one of the things I really admire about, uh, I guess I should call you President Chirac, President Chirac, is that uh, you've had this uh, great compassion for uh, the developing world. And I appreciate your compassion and I appreciate your heart. It's, uh, it's uh, important that we continue to work together to uh, make sure that uh, there is a strategy in place to help people develop and grow and prosper. Uh, I'm uh, looking forward to the dinner. He's always saying that the food here is fantastic. I'm, I'm going to give him a chance to, to show me tonight. Uh, and I also look forward to continuing our discussions on important issues, like how to make sure NATO works better, uh, how best to continue to work with our fr friends in Russia, uh, how we can work together to, in the Middle East to bring peace to that part of the world. I appreciate this good man advice. I listen carefully to it when he gives it. Uh, and I'm proud to call him friend. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you. Merci. C'est pas comme ça que ça marche d'habitude, mais allez-y. 
You mentioned this morning that uh, you expressed strong reservations to President Musharraf about the missile test in Pakistan. I'm wondering, sir, whether your administration actually asked President Musharraf not to conduct those tests, and second, whether you regard the escalating conflict there as a threat to U.S. forces in the region. And finally, as tomorrow is the first Memorial Day since 9-11, can you say to the American people how this Memorial Day will be somehow different from those past? Yeah. And President Chirac, you mentioned in your opening comments that the response to the President's strategic initiative with Russia from a year ago had not been what you had anticipated. Do you think that perhaps the Europeans overreacted a year ago to what President Bush was proposing to do with Russia? And were you suggesting, sir, that Perhaps you underestimated this president. Thank you. <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> uh, Pakistan, yeah, we, we, we expressed uh, deep concern and will continue to express concern about testing and are more concerned about uh, uh, making sure that uh, insisting, along with other world leaders, uh, that, uh, including the president of France, that uh, uh, President Musharraf show uh, results in terms of stopping people from crossing the line of control, stopping terrorism. That's what's more important than the missile testing, is that he perform. Um, I'm jet lagged. What's the first couple of questions? The second one, I would certainly hope not. Third? <laughs> is that it? Oh, Memorial Day. Thanks. That's what happens when you're over 55. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Let me, let me say one quick, quick, one, one, one quick thing on Memorial Day. Um, all Memorial Days are solemn days, particularly for those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Um, all Memorial Days are days in which Americans ought to give thanks for freedom and the fact that somebody sacrificed f for their freedom. This Memorial Day is the first Memorial Day in a long time in which younger Americans know firsthand the price that was paid for their freedom. Oui, sur ce dernier point, on that very Last point, can I maybe just say that um, it, it really is very moving for all the people of France and Europeans at large to see that uh, President Bush, that the President of the United States will be for the first time outside the United States on Memorial Day and that he come to, to Normandy to pay tribute to all those, mainly American, who gave their lives for freedom. This, I think, is a very strong gesture that we will not forget. That we will not forget. Maybe a question for a French journalist? Yes? After your trip to Russia, what would be for you the more decisive ally in your war against terrorism? Would it be Russia? or this little corner of this continent, which is called Western Europe. And please, Mr. President, don't say both. This wouldn't be the beginning of an answer. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I, what was that? I, I, I didn't get the full question. I got Russia and I got this little corner of Europe. But what was the question? Who do I rely on more? What is for you the most the more decisive lie in your war against decisive terrorism. Ally. <laughs> decisive ally. Ally. Decisive ally. Of course, Jacques Chirac. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, listen. <laughs> Thank you for the trick question. Uh, let me talk about this ally. Uh, the phone rang uh, the day after the attack. On the day of the attack, I can't remember exactly when, but it was immediately, and he said, I'm your friend. On this continent, France takes the lead in helping to hunt down uh, people who want to harm America and or the French or anybody else. 
We've shared intelligence in a way that is uh, a really important. One of the most important things of fighting the war on terror is to understand how the enemy thinks and when the enemy might strike. And make no mistake about it, they'd like to strike again. You know, some people would wish that their thoughts go away. But these are cold-blooded killers and requires strong cooperation to protect our citizens. My most important job, and I suspect Jacques feels the same way, is to protect our citizens from further attack. And it's, uh, we've got no stronger ally uh, in that task. I mean, he is willing to take steps necessary, obviously within the, uh, within the laws and constitution of this country, just like I'm in, within the constitution of mine, to protect our people. And for that, I'm very grateful, Mr. President. I'll call on the Americans. An American journalist, maybe? That uh, in uh, Russia, that President Putin had offered some assurances about Russian sales of nuclear energy technology to Iran that we would find comforting. Uh, aside from his statement that Russia doesn't want Iran to have nuclear weapons. What did you find comforting? And secondly, President Putin also argued that the plant he's building there is quite similar to the one the U.S. and others have offered to build in North Korea. Is that accurate, sir? And President Chirac, you mentioned that the two of you were talking about proliferation matters. Do you also have concerns about Russia's relations with Iran? Well, first, I think it's important to understand that President Putin understands that a uh, and Iran that's got the capacity to launch a missile is dangerous for him and his country. He understands that. Uh, secondly, he, uh, and we had a very frank discussion about the potential uh, or the development of a nuclear power plant that uh, he is convinced is, uh, will not lead to uh, the spread of technologies that will enable Iran to develop weapons of mass destruction and, and is willing to allow for international inspection uh, teams to, 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 make, to determine whether that's true or not. And uh, we're thinking about what he told us. As I said, we're thinking about what he told us. I share unreservedly the position uh, outlined by President Bush, by George. French journalist. Uh, France would like to see the Middle East uh, Peace Conference convene the quickest possible and the U.S. Uh, to, to do to act for it. May we know what are your forecasts for this Middle East Conference? And when, when do you think it will happen? And if President Arafat will, will be participating in such a conference? Also, I would like to know, if possible, what are your plans uh, for the Iraqi regime? Are you really willing to change the Iraqi regime and how? Okay. Whew, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, uh, let me start with the uh, Iraqi regime. The, the stated policy of my government is that we have a regime change. And as I told President Chirac, I have no war plans on my desk. And uh, I will continue to consult uh, closely with him. Uh, we do view Saddam Hussein as a serious, significant and serious threat to stability and peace. Uh, in terms of the Middle East, uh, this week, uh, we will be sending uh, American officials back into the region to work with uh, to work with the uh, parties to uh, have a political dialogue, start a political dialogue, as well as um, develop a security force within the Palestinian Authority that can will function like a security force. Actually, do what they're supposed to do, and. Uh, in terms of uh, meetings, you know, conferences, uh, our, our view is, is that we need to develop a strategy to continue to working with our Arab friends uh, on that strategy. And then the Secretary will be convening a, a ministerial conference sometimes this summer. Um, obviously, depending upon the progress being made, 
how much progress we are making to, uh, toward the establishment of the, of the uh, institutions necessary for a Palestinian state to evolve. Uh, that, that progress will determine how many conferences are necessary till we eventually get to a, hopefully the end of the process. Um, my government and I personally strongly believe that it's in everybody's interest that there be two states living side by side in peace. And uh, that's the vision we work toward. The good news is, is that uh, many in the Arab world are now working with us to, uh, to help create an environment so we can get to that, to those two states. And to that end, I'm, I view the uh, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia's declaration of a, of a declaration that Israel should uh, live in peace with its neighbors is an incredibly important breakthrough. And we're, we're seizing that initiative and seizing that opportunity to work together. David. Uh, um, last question for the American press, maybe. I meet you. You said in reaction to COVID. Yes, that's coming. You, you said in, re in reaction to demonstrations against you and your administration during this trip in Europe that it's simply a healthy democracy exercising its will and that disputes are, are positive. But I wonder why it is you think there are strong, such strong sentiments in Europe against you and against this administration. Why particularly those of you that you and your administration are trying to impose America's will uh, on the rest of the world, particularly when it comes to the Middle East and where the war on terrorism goes next. And Mr. President, pouvez-vous ajouter vos sentiments? Mr. President, would you maybe comment on that? Uh, Just four words and he plays like he's intercontinental. <laughs> Yeah, I'm impressed. Que bueno. Uh, now I'm literate in two languages. Um, <laughs> so you go to a protest, and I drive through the streets of Berlin seeing hundreds of people lining the road waving. And, uh, you know, I'm, look, the only thing I know to do is to speak my mind, to talk about my values talk about our mutual love for freedom and the willingness to defend freedom. And uh, David, I think a lot of people uh, uh, on the continent of Europe appreciate that. Appreciate the fact that we're friends. Appreciate the fact that we've got, we work together. That there's a heck of a lot more that, bind, that, uh, that unites us than divides us. We share the same values. We trade two trillion dollars a year. I mean, there's uh, so I, I, don't, I don't view hostility here. I view the fact that we got a lot of friends here, and I'm grateful for the friendship. And uh, the fact that protesters show up is that's good. It means we, we're I'm, I'm in a democracy. I'm traveling to a country that respects other people's points of view. Uh, but uh, I'm. I feel very comfortable coming to Europe. I feel very comfortable coming to France. I've got a lot of friends here. That's thank you. Well, um, the demonstrations you've been referring to, sir, are indeed, as uh, the, the president has just said. Um, healthy and normal in democracies. That is one of the means of expression that people have. And it's only normal and important that people should respect that. Of course, there are, there are limits, there are constraints that have to be enforced. And that is what is being done. But I think that it is only normal that in the face of a very important political event, those who have a different understanding of things should express their diverging view. The right to demonstrate is a fundamental right intertwined with democracy. And there's no need to tell Americans about that. They know it. 
But what I just wanted to say is that these demonstrations are really marginal demonstrations. That you shouldn't give too much credit to these demonstrations. They do not reflect a so-called natural aversion of uh, such or such a people in Europe to the President of the United States or to the U.S. people as a whole. Yes, we do have diverging views on this or that issue. It's only normal. And that is uh, the result of interests, of our national interests, that are not always converging. And I think it's only healthy that these demonstrations should occur, that we should express our diverging points of views, and that we should find democratic uh, answers to these questions. As for the relationship between Europe and the United States, it is a very old relationship, as you know. It is a fundamental relationship for the balance, for the e equilibrium of our world. But I would uh, also add that it's an increasingly important relationship. And it's, it would be uh, the sign of, of short-sightedness to refuse to acknowledge that. The, U the United States and Europe are the two major Euro economic powers in our world. And in our world, it, it, the economy drives social progress. Economic power helps express political power. So I think that there is a very real, a deep-rooted link between Europe and the United States. And that, the bedrock of that link, the roots of that link, is the shared values that we have together. And that must be uh, used to guarantee the balance of our world, the stability of our world. And that's precisely why we welcome uh, the trip of a American president in Europe, um, President Bush in this case. but. Generally, a, a, a statement of uh, generalities would be to say that we welcome a visit by the President of the United States because it shows the solidarity between the two, the two sides of the pond, the two sides of the Atlantic, something that is fundamental for the stability of our world. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen.